The term cycloalkane describes an alkane, which is a carbon compound consisting of only single bonds, and one that is cyclical, so it's a ringed structure. These are important because of their interesting structural characteristics, but also because there are cycloalkanes that are of physiological importance. One thing to be aware of when you're working with cycloalkanes is that a lot of times you'll get ring strain because you're forcing these bonds into a ringed shape. And a lot of times that requires the degree or angle of the bond to vary from the 109.5 degree tetrahedral shape that is the ideal spacing for single bonds in a carbon. And so when they deviate from this 109.5 degree tetrahedron, that creates strain. And ring strain is something that is inversely proportional to potential energy. And that's because when you force a bond to stop being in that tetrahedral shape, and perhaps with a three-membered ring like cyclopropane, which forces it into a triangle, you get a significant deviation from that angle. Remember that with a triangle, you have 120 degree angles. So that's significantly different from the way that those bonds want to be oriented. And that creates some potential strain. We can look at this chart here and see the degree of strain and the number of carbons present within your ring. Notice that cyclopropane, a three-membered ring, has very, very high ring strain and it's fairly unstable. The ring strain decreases until you get to cyclohexane, which is six-membered, and that has the ideal amount of minimal ring strain because they can all maintain this tetrahedral shape within a six-membered ring. Then it increases as you move towards cyclonanane, which has some ring strain, but not as much as the propane. And then as it gets larger, it moves down almost to zero, but it never quite reaches the low level of strain that you have with cyclohexane. And as you'll notice, cyclohexane is a very, very important organic compound. Ring strain is proportional to the potential energy being stored in those bonds. The greater the strain is, the more potential energy there is because those electrons are not in a super low energy state. They're kind of, they're kind of strained, I guess you could say, or they're very compressed and being forced into a shape that they don't want to hold. And as a result, there is potential energy. This makes those electrons more reactive because they do want to get out of that current environment. And there's a feature known as the heat of combustion. The heat of combustion is the heat that's released when you combust a cycloalkane. Oftentimes they measure heat of combustion not in terms of overall heat, but instead in terms of heat per carbon containing group. So a lot of times it will be heat of combustion per carbon. And something like cyclopropane has very, very high heat of combustion. With only three carbons, it releases a tremendous amount of energy when you combust it and break those ringed bonds. And notice also that ring strain is inversely proportional to the stability. So something like cyclohexane is very, very stable. And another thing that's very stable is very, very large ringed cycloalkanes. Those are two things that have very little strain because they're not deviating much from that ideal bond angle of 109.5 degrees. And so the most stable rings that you'll encounter are cyclohexane, particularly within its chair conformation, which we'll cover in a moment, and very, very large rings. And realize that ring strain is proportional to potential energy, reactivity, and the heat of combustion and it's inversely proportional to stability. And so now we'll move into cyclohexane and its various conformations.